Okay, so let's go through the functions of the compressor. Over here I have a track, I have a template of a song. And I'm only focusing on this snare sound over here. I have this snare sample, I took it out of the sample pack, the premium, and I took the snare sound 9, placed it here on an audio track. So this is an audio track, right click, insert audio track, that's how you create that. And then I went to audio effects and selected a compressor and dragged it onto this snare sound over here. So let's see what all those knobs on the compressor are actually doing. Um, you see right now the compressor, if we go to this view over here, we have several views. This is the collapsed view, sometimes it starts up like that. That's the curve view and this is the activity view. So let's stay with this view, for example, for, for the moment and um, see what happens. It shows us how much of the gain of the volume is being reduced with the compressor. And right now we see nothing is being reduced because the input signal is lower than the threshold of the compressor. So we need to go down here in order to have it working. So um, I'm going down to the threshold a little bit to see what it does. Now we can see the difference. This is the threshold and this is the gain reduction over here. And we see it starts working. The compressor starts working over there. So uh, right now it has the makeup gain on. So what does makeup gain mean? Uh, for every reduction in the volume, it tries to immediately take back the volume levels. So this area over here is immediately being taken back to the normal signal. So we turn off the makeup for the moment because um, we want to see more clearly what the compressor does. Let's go down. You see we are cutting off a lot of the initial transient right now. We are taking down the volume. So that's what the compressor does. It takes down the volume of the input signal in the area where we have our threshold. And it does it with this ratio over here. If we take down the ratio to 1, nothing happens. If we pull up the ratio, it starts working. So let's take it back to, to 2. And the next thing, the next knob over here is the attack. The attack tells us when the compressor starts kicking in. So if I select a very long attack time, for example, you see this sample is more or less 100 milliseconds long. So if I go to uh, something like this, it starts right at the end of the sample. And you almost don't hear any of the compression. You hear the, the transient of the snare, you hear it pretty well. So this part over here, you will hear a lot with such a long attack time. But if I take it down to zero, you see how this transient is taken down. It's playing less compared to the other stuff over here. So the release time down here is telling us how quickly it takes the signal back to reset, basically. Like how quickly are we moving up, back up. So if I take up the release time to something like this, it should take, you see it takes a longer time to go back to the normal volume. But over here we would uh, select a shorter release time. So every time we are hitting the threshold, the compression starts after the attack time, so after 0.01 milliseconds, and it works for 41 milliseconds. And then it's going to wait until the next signal to come in to hit the threshold again. So that's why you see those lines over here just hitting back after the next transient. They don't do something in between. So it's not working all the time. 
for something like drum sounds you use uh, shorter attack times because you want to most of the time you want to uh, mess around with the transients of the drum sounds you use also sometimes shorter release times and if you go to deeper frequencies with longer notes uh, you can increase attack times and release times the next thing over here is um, right now we are always working on peak mode we could also be working on uh, RMS mode which is basically the uh, root mean square or average so the threshold is not really the peak like the highest volume of the sample but it's some uh, value in the average volume so let's see what it does take back the threshold and see when it starts operating it's not it's not really doing much here over here it starts really doing something so let's compare this position over here with the peak rms works a little peak works a lot so rms is a lot more gentle compression there's a there's a third button over here that's expand that's basically working the other way around like the peak you can emphasize your transients for example with the expander if we were to like go down with the threshold it's getting really loud now we need to watch out you see the like the, the if you want to emphasize on transients of audio samples for example you can use the expand mode and if you want to get the transients like the initial hit of your sample away you can use the peak mode like over this like this I'm, I'm taking it out and this putting emphasis on on to it over here we can um, right now we are taking down the volume of the sample because we are trying to get this area volume wise closer to this area and then everything gets more silent we can um, make up for this effect by clicking the make up the make up will always like adjust the volume in the areas where over here we are cutting out some of the volume of the samples and we'll go back and hit it up or we can use some amount of output we want to decide on to uh, like make up for gain losses so we use the peak mode use heavy ratio of compression and then we make up Now we hear a lot more of the low end of our snare. We are not hearing so many transients, but compared to the transients, like the low end is a lot louder now. Without compression. Like you really notice the difference over here. The overall sample is getting more equally loud with compression compared to without compression. So what else do we have here? We have a knee, for example, and the knee basically tells us how the compressor works once it's getting over or close to the threshold. So you can get this view over here. Let's, let's lose this view and um, check out the knee over here. It looks a little bit rounded up and we can also make it a lot rounder than this or we can like have it have a kink over here what does that mean like the knee tells us the compressor kicks in once you reach it kicks in heavily what it doesn't do anything before the threshold but when you re reach the threshold of minus 18 decibels over here it really kicks in the compression And maybe I can use the expander.
It basically, with a softer knee, you have a gentler touch, and with a um, with a harder knee, you have a harder touch. So maybe if you're working with vocals, for example, you want a softer knee of your compressor because um, vocals most of the time need a more gentle feel, and um, then you get your knees a little softer. And if you're working with drums and and you want to compress them heavily, you can use harder knees, for example. Also, on vocals, you might want to use a uh, longer attack and release times like to have all the compression kick pression kick in a little softer with a hard knee it's getting very reactive well dry wet of course shows you how much of the compressor you're going to apply on the channel so um Notice how it's punchier like this and it's getting more evened out like this with, with a wet compressor. So this is how you use the Ableton compressor. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, post questions, if any, if I forgot something. And see you uh, next time on our channel.